Of course, we're just having good times on the set. We are about to speak matters rugby local and international, and we're going to speak with what happened on Thursday where Coach Paul Finney announced the squad for Los Angeles and Vancouver. That is fifth and sixth leg of HSBC World 7 Series. Joining us, Yvonne Namai, who has had touch and passion for rugby, of course, overwhelming passion for rugby. How come see, you love this rugby and yet you played basketball at high school <laughs> in the university level? <laughs> For Western uh, Delight. It was, it, was, it was my first sports marketing job, actually. So you developed so, passion for rugby So, so I, I, I learned from scratch. And uh, I think before I worked for the Kenya Rugby Union, I had gone for rugby games. But I'll tell you for free, I did not remember who played, what the scores were. I did not know the rules. It was just a social... It, it made social sense to go for rugby before. Because I think... I think <laughs> Myself and Osoro agree with you. We've been attending rugby games. A lot of uh, ladies are coming, you know, very excited about the games. But when you ask them about the scores, they are not aware. No, you cannot blame them. It's because rugby is majorly a festival. What happens on the field is not just that that is happening on the field. There are other things that happen past what's happening at the field of play. Is that the same way Kenyan football administrators are supposed to package their own brand so that they can start attracting, you know, Crowds. Yeah, it's true, true. Our football has been majorly playground football. Just come watch, nothing else happens in the stadium. So people think that the stadium is all about going, sitting and watching the match. Yes, you have the 90 minutes of watching the match, but what else happens after that or before that? And because Yvonne, we were speaking about sports marketing and football specifically because uh, right now no one is ready and very interested to go at Ruaraka Sports Club or at Camp Toyoyo to watch Ushuru against Fortune Sako because, I don't know, they say no value for their money. What do they mean when they say so? Um, I would slightly disagree, but uh, I believe uh, the problem of Kenyan football is in uh, the culture or lack of culture thereof. Um, culture is an association to something. For people to do what you want or for people to follow what you're following, then you should identify with something. I think um, since we started this at the backdrop of rugby, the difference is there's something that each rugby club stands for or the rugby players stand for. Yeah. So when you ask somebody about rugby, they have different descriptions. The most common will be, I can go to rugby with my child. I yeah. can go with my friends after doing my activities. You know, I can hang out at rugby. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's something I can associate with. But when you ask about football, uh, first of all, I think most people would start, I don't know where to watch the games, I don't know how to get to where the games are, you know. Um, and even for those who know the people who are playing, they're like, uh, I don't think I'll be so comfortable going to watch football. So I think um, it has to go back to defining what Kenyan football is. Because again, you have to understand that the people who know the technical side of the game are not the people who will come and follow the game yeah. those that number that ratio is too little yeah so if you rely on the technicality of the games then you'll remain alone with your games that's why yeah. we have only footballers enjoying the games <laughs> and going home they only know what they they is happening but the people who follow the game they need much more than the technicality yeah also i think because the uh, culture they said a way of life because you look at uh, rugby it's one sport that people love even from high school you can follow them in that people know that high school rugby is big in Kenya. These are the same kids who will grow to university rugby, college rugby, and these are the same, same kids who will grow to club rugby. And people can follow that. It's a true story. And it's up, it happens like in the world where we look at LeBron. These are kids who have been followed from high school, college, all the way to the, the NBA. NBA. NFL, the same thing. Mm -hmm. High school, college, NBA, then you turn professional. Rugby in Kenya is actually one sport that has done that, and you can know that this kid actually went to Nairobi school, then he went to University of Nairobi, then he went to Mwamba, yeah. and he, became, he went to the national team. But when you come to a football in Kenya, just one, you will say that, hey, Osoro played, I don't know, for Maseno, then I don't know Western Steamer. But that link between the narrative that they have for the people is really different, and Without that narrative, without that storyline, then there's no way people can follow you. 
you will exactly. never have eyeballs yeah, and, and I, i'm in a uh, few forums of football where <laughs> you see there is a sharp disconnect in terms of funding football activities from the government and funding other you know sporting disciplines like let's say golf world rally championship is coming back to kenya we saw even president kenyatta himself being at more international sports center kasarani flagging off and even announcing sponsorship from the government kenya open yes. is 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 slated for march 12th uh, uh, march 12th yeah. and you, we will see a lot of government representatives there but when it comes to football no sort of you know uh, government interests and now that brings us to the question as to why several football journalists even have been questioning the government's uh, lack of willingness to fund but from marketing angle why will government prefer other entities at the expense of what we perceive popular sporting disciplines um from a marketing perspective it still goes to what do you start for what brand do you represent um actually just a little bit of correction there in terms of funding over the years if we were to go at least two decades back yes. then football in Gets kenya has received money. the most yeah. amount of money yeah. of funding from the government so yeah. uh, that one is 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 very clear yes. you can, we can follow through and ever since football has always been the only sport that has consisted they sh those guys they will go to the to the press and say we can't go somewhere the next minute they're given money yeah. of all the sports they usually uh, the very first adamant the <laughs> and they usually the most they, they are like that last born child you know yeah. whenever they throw a tantrum things the go government will act. Way. exactly yeah. so i think what do you stand for yeah and um we're getting into an age where everything has to be justified even the expenditures within sport and uh, the only reason that kenya is not receive, uh, is not allocating as much money to sport yet is because the sports has been unable to account for uh, all these yeah. fans that are being uh, thrown to it and football for us is the best example yeah, yeah. Uh, we've seen uh, countries uh, our neighbors uh, uganda you know outrank us and they their government still funds them and, and it's very systematic but its performance best is result yeah. best they're playing better football than us yeah. both at senior and junior level so it comes down to what do you bring to the table you've mentioned uh, the Kenya Open yes there's a huge um, diplomatic um, benefit of the Kenya Open that hadn't been actualized before in a, in in times where uh, sports tourism or sports is playing a crucial role in diplomacy then you have to be cognizant of the political needs of the sitting government so you have always all the time when you're looking to analyze such decisions you have to get out of the sporting element and look at the bigger picture yeah so we've seen our neighbors like rwanda invest money in clubs in uh, european and clubs and their president has been so much committed exactly he he's become the face he's become the number one marketer yeah. for well, for for the, for the country yeah he goes and is in the most important places the right place at the right time yeah. all the time yeah so instead of us since we do not have a similar budget system uh, instead we do not have a similar funding system instead of us doing the same of going out then we had the one chance and you have to remember the current cabinet secretary of sports is a diplomat yes, yeah? yeah she knows the importance of well coming people and actually hosting them in a good yeah. way she knows the importance of image and right now that that was the biggest and one of the first steps she did you you if you look at uh, some of the things that she's done just when she got into office uh, first was uh, to fast track getting safari rally back into yes. the world rally yeah. calendar she went out there to meet those people and even if you There's look a lot of lobbying. lobbying that she does yeah, yeah. and in repackaging the Kenya Open it is supposed to bring people together you have to look at who plays golf yeah. who watches golf, golf. Yeah. these are the decision makers so it means even as we are going as a country in the bigger picture that the country has as a government then for us to capture the attention of the people who will spend money or pump money into the Kenyan economy then we have to meet them where they are and most of them are where the golf is most of them are where the, where the rally is because if you look at these two spots uh, in terms of expenditure um, when we when we are doing um, a marketing strategy we look at with uh, consumer analysis who consumes these particular yeah, things product. so the people who consume golf and rugby if you look at uh, golf and uh, rally sorry are these people who are able to make an a significant impact economically in the long run so for us it's much bigger than just the sport so um 
the takeaway from this is that uh, the current sports rights holders, the, the sports federations and the teams need to look at the bigger picture so that yeah. when you're talking to government, you're talking to, you're meeting them from their point of interest. So as a government, we know you're looking towards this. Like for instance, if you, um, if you start with a Vision 2030 approach towards government funding, you might, yeah. you might get 10 times or even 100 times more funding than than what you're getting as a sports federation. So look at what the government is doing and then look at how you fit in to them achieving their objective. And the rally and uh, Kenya Open have been able to articulate the same. So they are suiting the political and um, benefiting the sport. Yeah. I know sports marketing is not our topic this particular afternoon, but just to wind up on that uh, aspect, uh, Yvonne is talking about a very important element of, you know, by the virtue that our CS is a diplomat, therefore, you know, she has to take us to, you know, the global front in terms of marketing yeah. as the same way uh, Paul Kagame, when this president is doing, who is now the number one marketer for that particular country. But now, where does this leave the role of Brand Kenya and Kenya Tourism Board? No, I think they're enjoined in that a little more, mostly with the magical open. You'll see Brand Kenya there and everything. I think Brand Kenya was raising awareness of Kenya all over and they're using golf to do that. I think it's because it's easy to use golf because it comes with many different terms and it being a European tour, it affects everybody who is outside Kenya. More so in the world of golf, because these are the people who follow the European tour. They want to know who is the best ranked Kenyan, who is the best seeded Kenyan to come and play. And it will be major. People just don't realize this, but once a local or from the Magic Open gets now to the European tour himself, and you see our Kenyan playing in Europe, then people will realize that this is actually big. But even away from that, look at the companies that are coming to sponsor that. You realize the company, the way you are saying it. Look at the companies that are coming to sponsor such an event. Look at ABSA Group. Look at EABL. And they know these are the consumers who are taking our product. Other sports, more so football, they are still lagging behind. They, are, they don't want to embrace the, front, the way things are done at the moment. They are still lagging behind and saying that we need funding, we need to get this, we need to get this. They don't even know how to package to get money for themselves. Because now, you look, last time... Last the Kenya Open last time itself, I think Marches gave them upwards of 450 million for broadcast rights of golf, which many Kenyans don't actually watch, don't even know that there's golf on TV. Even if they tune to a golf channel, they don't even realize that this is a big thing. And that's where they lose the point of it all. And it is going to be big and it's going to be bigger. And these other sports, all the time they're going to be suffering because they don't want to embrace new ideas. They don't want to impress new ideas. Now, Yvonne, let's speak about the squad naming of Shuja by Paul Finney on Thursday ahead of Vancouver and Los Angeles, fifth and sixth legs of HSBC World 7 Series, respectively. Rotational uh, aspect, why is the coach opting for the same? Because he's dropped a few players who featured in the last four legs and bringing in new faces, uh, you know, the likes of uh, Oscar Uma, who hasn't played recently, you know, <laughs> making the cut. Uh, it's an Olympic year. <laughs> oh, it is an Olympic year. It yeah. is an Olympic year, and um, with the with the with the what, what do you call it? Uh, with the prestigiousness of the competition that is Olympics, then everyone wants to at least medal um, at the Olympics. Yeah. Yes. If you remember, Kenya's best uh, showing um, in um, in uh, global rugby was during the Sevens World Cup yes. way back. Um, uh, it should be in 2013 or 20. Yeah, 2013, uh, and we made the. We were able to make semis. I think. Um, Finley's, uh, I've not, I've not, I've not had the opportunity to hear so much thoughts about that. But I think he's, he knows or he has realized the potential that Kenya has to actually medal at global competitions. So uh, he's been taking the past um, two years to create the squad yes. that is going to play at the Olympics. So I would look at it as. Um, as a, as, a, as, a, as a strategy towards him picking his squad for the Olympics. For mm. me, I think it's a positive. I didn't think people like uh, Oscar Uma are going to come back to the, <laughs> to the, to the, uh, to the um, 7th squad. World Series. Yeah. Uh, because considering uh, the conditioning required to play at that level, I thought that uh, the absence from the 7th scene might not uh, be a reality.
Also, Robert, the inclusion of those players, uh, uh, notably Oscar Uma, who has had, of course, his time with the national team, Shuja, and with his vast experience, he's played at the big stage most of the times. Samuel Lech also making a comeback. I don't know. How will uh, Paul Finney, uh, you know, revolve around trying to blend those who featured during the previous four legs I think also and you, those who are making the cut for the first time this year? I think also, yeah, I think... In my opinion, also, he has to consider the performance of the previous legs because the previous legs we did not, like the last leg, we did not, the sitting leg, we did not perform very well. We lost some, all the three matches that we had in the pool. So I think he has to consider that. And going to Las Vegas is also considering that we are playing Las Vegas and Vancouver. Then the calendar changed because of the COVID virus. So, and we are going to have the Asian legs coming a little bit later. So he has to consider that I have to get my best players going for Las Vegas, rest some of my best players and bring them back into the tight end because now you realize that the format of the series also changed. We don't have the ball, we don't have the plate. It's all about the ranking number. Where are you going to get? Where, where is your number going to be? And that is actually what they are fighting for at the moment. But um, we we are get, we're going back to the to the to the old format for this uh, North for, American leg. Uh -huh. I think uh, it was a very it was a commercial best decision, which um, I did applaud. It it's not good for the sevens rugby fan, yeah. but uh, when you come to an age where, uh, uh, especially world rugby being the first. Uh, global federation to yes. actually um, remove the gender identity out of its competition then they're looking to give both men and women an yeah. equal opportunity and uh, this was a very commercial decision in terms of um, ensuring that uh, the seven world series uh, incorporated as many women's competitions as yes. possible yeah. and we went back to the ranking system mm -hmm. and i think um uh, our our coach finley might have had a little bit of confidence bringing these uh, players at this time because we're go we're reverting back to the old system uh, for for this uh, north american leg and we're going to have um enough time to showcase or to test the fitness levels of uh, sami mm -hmm. and Ouma coming back and then i think also it was a very psychological move on the end of the coach because uh, we've been having young lads we see them we've seen them during the seven circuit they're doing yeah. so well yes and then they get there and there's a little bit of um uh, complacency uh, working now performing at the world yeah. stage is yeah. different, it's a bit different. <laughs> yeah. so we need we need yeah so this blend yeah. actually yeah. is very yeah. uh, is, is very um, good for us because yeah. now at least uh, the young boys are going to actually have yeah. psychological uh, um, confidence yeah. going into the game so they'll be able to execute. I, I think it was the time of uh, the former homeboys coach. Was also Paul Muruga. Yeah, Paul Muruga is the one yeah. who, was, who was put into the deep end. It was baptism by fire. By fire. <laughs> <laughs> bringing the young lads. But when they get to that stage is a bit different and I think that's why even he has kept one captain at the moment, no yeah. changes in the captain because yeah. this is the guy who can bring the young guys under to the come to the fold. Yeah. This is how we do it at the global stage, and they can grow from there. How instrumental is the experienced trio of Colin Sinjera, Andrew Amond, and Willins uh, Ambaka in that particular squad? Of course, they have been evergreen. They have been there. I, I think it's also they are getting into the twilight years of the game for them, yep. and now they have to give these players a chance. Yes, Collins in Jera is there, but he's not performing the way he did in 2012. He's not performing the way he did in 2010. So I think he's there. He has like back from injury again. This I think is third leg that he's getting into. But now I think his major work at the moment is molding these young tax to take over yeah and, and we, we've seen that yeah. during the halftime talk you know the yes. boys get <laughs> yes. the injury gets so personal you yeah. know and he's like you know guys this is what we need to do yeah. he knows he's not as fast as he used to, he used to be. and but yeah. he's taken that i think that's one of the things that made me think that injera and oscar might not come back because we saw them i saw i i noticed they were they were more inclined towards making things better better than during their time yeah i have um I think sometimes I always think Andrew Monde is Superman. He doesn't look like he's anywhere oh near goodness. retiring. Yes. Uh, <laughs> of all of all yeah, the people we've yeah, had yes. in, the, in the series, our captain just yes. he doesn't look a day I, I, older I than than, than uh, twenty five. Yeah. You know, he's I, I, <laughs> he's I, I remember it. These players are the one who brought us to the world stage. They are the one yeah. who brought us to the world stage, and the narrative has been them at that stage. But I think 
we are moving away from that. Now we are yeah. bringing in the young guys. Look at Buffer. He made, I think, his debut in Hong Kong 2016. Mm. And from there, he has grown on to that stage. 24 yeah. years, but he has grown on to that stage. And for now, even everybody will be like, I want to get into that role. I think okay. the role Andrew Amond has been playing, giving his service to the nation needs to be applauded. Because this man, I wonder which time <laughs> does he rest. Because he's featuring in Safari 7s yeah. during Kenya Cup. He's there for KCB. KCB yeah. all the time. You know, for 15s. At the, <laughs> I, I think also <laughs> as, as, a player, as a player, during your prime, just perform at your prime. But he's been at prime for a decade. <laughs> About Andrew Amonde, you remember yeah. when the heavyweight, the experienced players yes. were downing their tools over, you know, contractual disagreement okay. between yes. rugby union. Andrew Amonde was there, man. Yeah, yeah. as captain, he yeah. actually <laughs> upheld. Yeah. I think uh, Andrew as a brand, I don't know. Um, I think at some point he gets he gets branded as uh, a betrayal because you see, you remember when. The likes of Injera, Monde, yes. no, uh, no, Injera, uh, Uma, Uma, yeah, Adema, Lavin, when there was that, yeah, yes, yeah. But um, I think for him, uh, he's shown the best leadership quality that we would require of any From captain, captain yeah. actually, yes, yeah. because he doesn't take sides. Yeah. All the time he doesn't take sides. He's always almost neutral yeah. to try and fit in the 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 the, the, the um, uh, needs of every party. Um, I think what goes on behind the scenes is um, is is maybe uh, much important than what goes on in front. And he yeah. knows that yes. as a leader, he yeah. knows he doesn't have to yeah. air his dirty laundry uh, uh, to because the public. to the public. Yeah. So he doesn't, you know. Yeah. So he doesn't feel the need to yeah. look like, oh, let me do this so that I am seen like this. He he maintains that he's like our. Um, Mwai Kibaki, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the Kenyan economy was doing so well, but any time uh, he was being bashed as president, he never, never. responded. Yeah. Yeah. But things were going on well, the way. Yeah. yeah. So I think um, he's a very good leader, and I think for for. <clears throat> For all our players, they responded the best to the strength and conditioning yeah. for the for the rugby player, and he's the ultimate machine, you know, like ultimate <laughs> machine. Of course, as we wind up, let's speak about Kenya Cup. It's match day, fourteen, uh, fourteen, and yeah. the fixtures are on card. Of course, KCB up against Oilers. Oh my goodness, Sorry. Oilers! Is it because of financial and you know concrete sponsorship they've been doing very well, considering they're making their debut in Kenya Cup? Or it's they, the second time. They they ha they have Gibson Weru. <laughs> it is about the people. Yeah. It is about the people. Yeah. And I think um, I, I think if you if you had a chance, I didn't get to watch Gibson Weru as much. Yes. But if you had a chance to go through his um, his uh, his philosophy as a player, yeah. then you'd understand why he's doing so well as a coach. I think uh, money notwithstanding, it's about the person behind the team. It's about it's about the people within the team. And I think. Um, for him, I think he makes the entire change um, in the Oilers Gibson team. Gibson Weru must have played alongside the likes of Benjamin Ayimba. Yes, for he, the was, he team. was. In fact, he was. He was uh, the only Kikuyu in the rugby team. <laughs> <for a long laughs> time. And just when people thought, oh, Kikuyu yeah, 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 is not yeah, meant yeah, for yeah. Yes. people from Central. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But he's a very good. Uh, he has a very good work ethic. And I think that's what he's instilled in his players. And uh, we've seen him handle situations. I think when they made their debut during the seven circuit as a team, as yes, an Oilers yes, team, yes. we saw how he handled um, the team. And uh, his, player, his players have actually um, benefited a lot from his ethics. Western Bulls, they are not doing very well. And they are up against Tom Boys at the Bull Ring. They lost, that, uh, I think, lost. Uh, yeah. match day 13. Yeah. They yes. lost actually the Bull Ring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do they look like they will get relegated? They're actually in relegation. Yeah, in the relegation zone. Those and Kisumu, they're yeah. in the relegation and zone. And Kisumu is also playing Black, Black, Black Blood is the one that, that has... The, I, that I is, think they've won two <laughs> that is at KU and yes. they have pulled away from the zone. Yes. Mm. And they are trying their best to stay there because you don't want to go for that relegation zone. It may be you, tough for you to come back. Yeah. That's, that it's looks very, like a derby. It's very, it's very worrying, actually, yeah. to Robert have both machine. Western teams yeah. Um, yeah. in relegation. Yeah. It's very, very worrying. Generally, what do you make of the Kenya Cup run this particular season? How has it been like? Of course, it's a battle between KCB and Cabras Rugby yeah. yeah. Football yeah. Club. Yeah. Like, it looks like an epic like, showdown. Ever yeah. since Cabras debuted in the Kenya Cup, they're not stopping. You know, yeah. they've just maintained, you know, they're always uh, finalists, finalists, finalists. Yeah. So, yes. um... I think um, 
this season has been uh, has been really good because if you look at the people who are fighting for the playoff slot yeah they're, they're also not so um not so common people yeah we've seen a season where harley queens are almost looking like it's their first season back in the yes. kenya cup you know so i think we are picking up uh the only worrying Next thing time in the playoff slot we have got i think mwamba yeah we got nondi impala, impala. Mm. it's a tough one for them we have, we have the first to plus and kcb uh, yeah yeah but this one's have to fight for that position Oilers and Nakuru. Yeah. so the only worrying thing is uh, having kisumu and western bulls yeah. at relegation mm -hmm. worrying because um initially uh this uh, like playing in the kenya cup play, playing in the premier competition is a sign of um of, of, a, of a result of the work of growing the participation because yes. if you do not have all these regional representatives in your premier league then it means we are doing something really wrong yes. so um for me this season that would be the only worrying thing the national championships are amazing and i think sometimes if yeah. if that one day and in, in a deal situation we had tv for that i think people would understand why it means so much to have a I, regional team i think i think if there is a sport in kenya i would lure Sorry. any corporate to come on board and sponsor it is rugby oh my goodness <laughs> that overwhelming passion from rugby fans just like you indicated it I, I even from players themselves <laughs> they deliver to the fullest think, you know i, I think what, what what people have failed to understand is uh our sport at the moment is being failed by decision makers most yeah, of our decision yeah. makers more, more so in a traditional tv is that they don't understand that rugby is a big sport everybody thinks football is the big thing athletics is the big thing but they don't know the value of rugby on tv look at the super rugby Everybody watches Super Rugby. Everybody yes. wants to watch. They're not fans, but yeah, <laughs> when, when they go on TV, yeah, it's a everybody watches go, on TV. Yeah, yeah. everybody who goes to TV and says, hey, "I want to watch Super Rugby. It's big. Look at Six Nations. Yes. Yeah. People are following it mm. all over. When the World the Rugby, rugby comes, yeah, the series comes. Everybody's on TV to watch, and it's us as TV, which I'm a person in, to make that concrete decision to cover rugby. Yeah. Uh, that, that's the whole point. Because you look at even these sports like the NBA, the NFL, which are big on TV, did not just start a boom yeah, to they TV. Yeah, they started abruptly. Yeah, they took, they took a, there was a president said, let's go and cover basketball. Yeah. Let's see how even, even, even when yeah. you go back to the yeah. history of the yeah. English yeah. Premier League, yes. it's all yeah. driven by the media largely. It's largely yeah. driven by yes, the media. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, um, you go to you go to the UK. You mm. will not see anything to do with any other league or federation yes. until they cover everything mm. to do yes. with the UK. UK you you, yes. you watch BBC. <laughs> yeah. You watch Sky Sports. <laughs> you will know up to that the lower fifth, league. sixth league <laughs> something yes. Yes. before you hear yeah. about any other league. You know. Yeah. So there's a huge mm. uh, media influence uh, yes, over too. there mm. in terms of uh, Kenya in itself. I think um, we have to be cognizant of the fact that the sports economy ecosystem is not fully uh, developed so it might not make economical sense yes. right now for broadcasters to pick up such uh, properties mm -hmm. but I think um, I think um, we uh, we should we should uh, uh, empower our current yeah. government to understand the economical sense that sports brings mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, that way then it will have a ripple effect if you if you notice uh, in anything that uh, that is done if it's government backed yeah. the ripple effect always ends up being a lot if we yeah. just go back to uh, the Kenya open uh, within uh, sports marketing and sponsorship we have uh, something we call category exclusivity yes. in that if I have uh, this water then I can't have another water in the same event yeah and uh, you'll see it replicated across various sports properties yeah. but look at Kenya open how many banks give money to it yeah all our Kenyan banks give money to, to the Kenya, Kenya open. open why because of the government factor so yeah. anything that government backs like for instance right now if uh, government was to take a strategic uh, direction to invest maybe in grassroots sports yeah, yeah? You'll find that Pale Mashinani, all these branches of our Nini will give something yeah. to support yes. those grassroots True. projects. Yeah? yeah. So um we we 
we are moving away from playing blame games, but what we can do right now is to ensure that uh, we expose, especially people like me in uh, in sports marketing and in sports business, we ensure we are working towards ensuring that we expose our knowledge to other people because uh, when we do that, then they understand what role they play. Yeah. Now, like for instance, uh, some of us are trying to lobby to have... Um, the government include uh, sports as a key strategy for achieving the vision 20, 2030, uh, 2030 yes. because we understand how that can influence uh, the or rather accelerate the government achieving yeah. uh, this vision so it's about uh, now sharing the knowledge because if you go back to it any stakeholder within sports you speak to it's about lack of knowledge most of them yeah. do not yeah. understand very true. Very true. what role they play so right now we are moving away from uh, oh so and so should have done no we are saying the table is so big so you can take this seat at the table so no game of musical chairs no 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 this I, I, time I, the table is set yeah we, we, you the, choose the, the, the best advice for the federation and everybody in sport is give a chance to someone who has learned to help you out because if you remain your traditional role you're going to fail Completely. Quality conversation, it's been with Yvonne Amaya, reputable sports marketer and someone who has overwhelming passion for rugby as well, talking about what has been happening in the world of sports marketing. Of course, this sports marketing topic is a huge conversation that we need to create a two-hour blog show just to talk about <laughs> it. Because even as we speak now, Sportpesa, at some point, one of the Kenyan leading betting firms terminated their contracts with Irish football body. They have also left... Uh, uh, sponsoring Everton and though they continue with other franchise Simba and Younger in Tanzania alongside mm. yeah. uh, which entity in South African Premier yeah, League? Cape Town City. City. Cape Town City. Yeah. Also they continue with sponsorship of the same. So Yvonne it's been a pleasure having you on board. Thank you for coming through. Uh, I can't go without saying that uh, you forgot to say about the Kenya Leonesses playing in the Challenger Series. Yeah, and they <laughs> have qualified to the Olympics. <laughs> they qualified yeah. to the Olympics. Yeah. And if you remember the last Olympics, yeah. they did not get so many, uh, so many chances to actually uh, play more games before the Olympics. So we did not do so well yeah. in the Olympics. So I think... Uh, <laughs> I've had ladies fairness, on the show. <laughs> in all fairness. <laughs> in all fairness. <laughs> yes. Uh, just as we close out, uh, also the... Um, uh, Coach Finley's, because you have to remember Finley's is the technical overall, director. The technical yeah, yes. director, yeah. So part of his program included um, uh, uh, increasing the uh, exposure for, for the exactly, especially yeah. match fitness heading to the Olympics. So yeah. they are heading out to the Challenger Series also uh, for them uh, in Cape Town, and I think. Um, we're going to get a few more games than we had uh, before the previous Olympics. Wow, thank you for <laughs> that clarification. And of course, looking forward to sparkling performance from mm -hmm. Kenya Lionesses. Malkia strikers have equally qualified. Yeah. So two Kenyan women sports. So teams. I think it's such uh, a big team deal. sports. Team sport. hey, <laughs> they have already qualified. Of course, Shuja too <laughs> have qualified. So we're waiting for other uh, representatives to see whether they can also qualify. We've seen Nok trying to intensify their preparations in terms of even urging the government to fund all these sporting disciplines to prepare very well ahead of the summer games slated for Tokyo, Japan. That brings us to the end of this particular conversation. We're going to take a short break of about two minutes before we come back with the fans on where we'll give a focus on international football. Thank you for sticking to the touchline. We will be back shortly.